Hello everybody, welcome back to Cure for the Common Game. Today we're going to talk about deck number 392, The Heart of the Oceans. I don't know if I want to try to say Chiz... Chizai? Chizay? Chizay. Chizzle. I don't know. But I do want to take a quick minute to... I believe... Uh, I don't know if I'm going to beat them to the punch or not, but I want to do a big congratulations to the commander cookout podcast the cco boys brando and ryan on their 100th episode keep it up guys some good stuff and if you're not listening to them um they started off in sheer audio just podcast form they are starting to get into the youtube video world with us now but definitely i spend a lot of time ingesting all kinds of podcasts and theirs is one of the greatest. They've been doing it almost two years now. Um, but anyway, let's get to the heart of the oceans. Now, this we got a four man of four four flyer. Today that would be good enough, but this is Kamigawa block, so there's got to be a drawback. Now, at the beginning of your upkeep, you got to sacrifice your commander unless you remove a counter from a permanent you control. Now. We've got to have permanents with counters on them to remove just to keep our commander alive. So the very first thing, uh, I mean, uh, I'm not going to say the first things, but here's uh, uh, the one thing. Yeah, yeah, okay. Dark Depths did pop in my mind. That was pretty much the first thing that popped in. But then... I mean, because you just play the land and it comes with 10 counters. So, yeah, it's a slow way of doing it. There is no, you know, turbo anything to to the depths. But, hey, it gets a free counter removed, and that's what you want. Thing in the ice. Comes into play with four counters on it, and when they get gone, you get the big nasty. So, those are the two cards that first and foremost popped in my head, and I thought, you know what? There's more. There's got to be more, right? So, I started thinking about stuff like Jinx Choker. So, this is the end of your turn. You give it away and put a counter on it. And at the beginning of whoever controls its upkeep, uh, they take a damage. So, and, and, of course, you know, three mana, you can add or remove. So I was thinking, you know what? This can also be a win condition. If somebody gives it back to me, I can remove counters on it, you know. Persist counters. Because when it dies, it's going to come back with a minus one, minus one. So our Archmage here... We can spend our blue mana, sack it. It's going to come back, thanks to persist, with this nasty minus one, minus one counter on it. During our upkeep, our commander can remove that, and we've got it over and over again. So, kind of not bad. And I don't know if... Uh, let's see if I've got any more persist in here before I get into the really, really good stuff. Yeah, I've got the River Kelpie. Or another permanent is put into a graveyard. You draw. Or another permanent is put into play from a graveyard. Okay, you draw a card. Do whatever spells play from a graveyard. So, then uh, I was like, well, Persist does deal with the minus one, minus one counter. So, so let's look at things like Chain Breaker, stuff that... that tinkers with minus one minus one counters you know we've got the chain breaker of course power conduit to move around counters um and by the way removing a minus one and putting a plus one this seems good the biskillion here is I, I mean this is really neat because you tap him put a counter on him and a counter on something else and you, our commander just lets us remove the one from him. So 
just a, a lot of pretty decent shenanigans here. Um, move a counter. I love how it says a counter from target creature onto another target creature. So the only problem is that's the untap symbol. So we got to get some, you know. Uh, then, of course, we have clock spinning. I got off my creatures. and Well, off my counter making stuff. Uh, let's look at Armageddon Clock. It's kind of a similar thing. Yeah. It can whittle away some damage. But, let's face it. We're all here for age counters. For cumulative upkeep. Cumulative upkeep uses an age counter now. You put the age counter on it and then you pay the, the upkeep cost for each age counter on it so that's how cumulative upkeep works now so um, the ability to just not have to pay the upkeep especially on something like mystic remora illusions of grandeur halls of mist glacial chasm breath of dreams because you know there might be a green deck at the table reality twist you want to talk about slowing it down to where you know dark depths can win um let's just not have to pay upkeep on reality twist that's nice musician this is an amazing car without a cumulative upkeep vexing sphinx now this one is eh so this one's not really so bad. I, you know, cumulative hurts, but uh, ancestral knowledge, right? Title control. All of these cumulative upkeep cards. And I, and then I looked and I said, well, you know what? I have such a high concentration of cumulative upkeep. Mm, maybe I should be running an Eon Hub just in case. I mean, yeah, it's almost kind of a nombo with our commander, but we have an, enough other counters of things. And quite frankly, if we've got the Eon Hub and we're doing the reality twist thing, you know, I probably don't need my 4 4 commander. <laughs> I probably got it, you know. So, a few other things that just, you know, add a few. Uh, the counter, uh, of course, cumulative upkeep. Unstable mutation. Now, this is just the combo in and of itself. Uh, you play the commander, and you put the unstable mutation on the commander, and you swing with 7-7 seven, seven flying. And that puts it in the three-hit mark. And then during your upkeep, it gets the minus one, minus one counter, and you remove the minus one, minus one counter. And swing for seven again. Quick Silver Fountain, to be honest with you, I can't remember. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, oh. The Flood Counters. Yeah, so... At end of turn, if all lands in play are islands, remove all Flood Counters. So, you're never going to get to that point. You can hose out the entire table, but during your upkeep, you can take a counter off of one of their lands... To where it's not an island and that way at the end of your turn it doesn't bury itself or the all the counters don't get removed of course we have biting tether it's uh you know it's a little more expensive control magic uh what is that mind control in this in mono blue it doesn't matter that it's easy to cast uh, it's still fine but at the beginning of your upkeep you put the counter on then you can take the counter off Reality Acid. Now, Vanishing. This is one of the Vanishing cards that you want to leave play. So, you know, you can... And it's a sacrifice ability. So that gets around the crazy, indestructible, and whatever. Now, I guess we should probably look at some ramp. Uh, there, There's not a heck of a lot of ramp in here. You know, Star Compass, Silver Mirror, High Tide, of course. Dreamscape Artist, because he turns 
whatever card in your hand you want into a harrow every turn. And then blue mana battery. A blue mana battery is a little weird of an include. I know, but it serves double purpose here just in case something goes wrong and we need to remove a counter and we don't have something. So we can kind of get there with the blue mana battery if we just got to have our, our commander. Um, I am running some counter magic. I say some. What is this? Eight cards? Of course, counter spell. Dismiss. Not a lot of people play Mana League, but I've actually successfully cast this, you know, several times. People love to get value, and yes, it's better in the early game than late. Rewind, negate, dissipate, annul, and blue elemental blast. Now, uh, here, let's go ahead and do these few non-basics that we got left. Of course, the Coral Atoll, the Temple, those are just because they, you know... In a pinch, the temple can give you double blue. Uh, a storage land, obviously. And the moon ring island. Now. Uh, let's see. How about card draw? Card draw is cool. Pulse of the grid. Pulse of the Grid does not get enough love because more in a multiplayer environment, just about somebody's going to have more cards than you. So, I mean, I like it. Opportunity, that's right. Just good old-fashioned mana for cards. And it's four cards. It's six mana. But most importantly, it's instant speed. Preordain. Now, hatching plans was one of those cards they gave us hatching plans in guild pact and, and we were like this is rare okay when it's put into the graveyard you from from play you draw three cards and we were all like i don't get it i don't get it how do how do we how do we get it into the graveyard it's an enchantment we can and then they gave us cold snap perilous research now perilous research is actually the reason Perilous Research is the card for the deck because it's an instant speed sack of permanent. Yeah, I get to draw two cards, but there are times when, you know, people will mess with our, our, our little system that we've got going, and if they, you know, get rid of the hub right before your upkeep or if they, whatever, you've got an out here. And if you just happen to have the Hatchling Pans, you spent four mana to draw, what, five cards? Yeah. Yeah. Theft of Dreams. Now, <clears throat> I just don't know that this sees enough play. Yeah, it's very conditional on your opponents having creatures that are tapped. Well, you know what? That happens a lot. Especially if there tends to be a green player at the table. Or tokens, or anything. For each tapped creature, you get to draw a card. So... How many does it take for this to be good? It is a sorcery. So... Does it take two? Two makes this... Um, oh, that... What, that Council Sortami? Two colors and a blue sorcery, draw two cards. If you can get three, I think that's amazing. Three mana, three cards. And I think anything above three, you're just getting all kinds of value out of so now let's look at what i'm gonna call some removal you know stuff like turn to frog ovenize rapid hybridization boomerang counts there's been many times i've had a, a boomerang in my hand when somebody went to cast a wheel of fortune type effect and i just bounce up bounce the problem to their hand Get rid of that indestructible thing, put it back in your hand, and then we'll wheel. Gotcha. Echoing Truth, I also am a firm believer in, because, you know, tokens are a thing. And now they've just printed the fourth card that has the any number in a deck clause. So, which as soon as I get enough of those, I'll show you all that deck. And I do apologize, this is not a Ravnica Allegiance deck, and but this is, you know, one of the decks I had done. 
Uh, took a little while before Ravnica Allegiance, and I, I built a whole bunch of decks. I pre-built a lot of those, and then I finished up some of the others. So it's going to be hit or miss for a little while. You know, it, it, it might be from the new one. It might not. But also something else that I have, am trying out. This is the first deck I have. I've changed the website where I list at. It is deckstats.net. Uh, I'm going to try it. See what I, I still. It took me a long time to enter it in the first time. There is a, a slight learning curve to it, but the data is apparently way better. And from what I've seen, it is. Uh, there's all kinds of things, and most importantly, it supports EDH Rec. It lets EDH Rec scrape the data, to which y'all know that I I have been, uh, you know. Doing what I can to push EDH Rec. I, I've been, they've been doing what they can to help me. They show every, uh, I write like a digest every time I get through 10 videos and I write a digest and it appears on their articles and it's, you know, they've done a lot to help me and I want to, you know, as big of an EDH Rec guy as I am, I kind of want my decks to be on EDH Rec to matter, to get scraped. So, uh, tapped out, they do not scrape. Tapped out will not let them scrape it. So, anyway, back to the to removal here. Uh, Pendril Mist. I realize this is a reserve list card, but and yeah, we can say whatever we want to about the reserve list, good, bad, whatever. The fact of the matter is, they've kind of held true to it for a while. So it looks like, short of something, you, you know epic level that they're going to stay true to this so if you're thinking about getting any any card on the reserve list especially the cheap ones you know pendril mist i say cheap it's what i don't think it's seen 20 bucks yet but uh it's cheap compared to some of the others that are on there if you're thinking about it go ahead and take the plunge because you know what they ain't getting no cheaper uh, but anyway pendril mist Great card to control some population. Uh, as you've noticed, we don't have a whole lot of creatures in the deck. And creature swarm decks can kill us <laughs> quickly. So, hence the Pendril Mist. Oh, by the way, bonus points if you've got the Pendril Mist and the Mana Short. I'm not going to tell you what it does. Go look it up if you don't know. If you do know, you're smiling right now. I know you are. <laughs> and then, of course, we have the Fade Away which is a lot like the Pendrel Mist, only it's going to happen on your turn and you get to pick and choose and you look around the table and, hey, everybody's tapped out. Play the Jordan. Fade away. So, now, uh, I guess we'll call this the other stuff. Arcane Lab probably shouldn't be in here. I'm not going to lie. There's a uh, there's some really really ridiculous combos with this card, uh, you know. Counter the first spell cast each turn, and then you just lock everybody out. This is not that deck, but this is the to keep. I'm gonna call this an insurance policy. You know what they say about insurance: better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Um, there are a lot of decks that just even. My mind goes to the word storm, but we it, it doesn't have to be a storm deck to, or, or a you know just play a lot of spells. And as soon as you can start double spelling, anybody starts double spelling on the same turn, that's an advantage. That's a really big advantage. Well, let's look at shifting loyalties. Exchange control of two target permanents that share a card type. So here's the beautiful part that you can give them your. Illusions of Grandeur for their, you know, whatever their enchantment that you want is. Or creatures, lands, whatever. And they can deal with paying that cumulative of upkeep. We have a Daring Thief. Inspired, not the greatest mechanic, but here, this, this may work. I probably need... Because there's the Daring Thief and there's the Untap guy. I, like, crewing vehicles is really good for 
the untap thing. You know, inspired in the untap symbols, not a whole lot different. Uh, of a, they're different mechanics, but to work around for our purpose for deck building, it's, it's similar. So the problem is, you know, if you just swing with this guy, they're nah, unless you get him out early. And then you probably don't have enough to, but yeah, I need a reliable way to tap and vehicles. Vehicles is pretty good. There's other ways. He is a human rogue. So you've got those, you know, tap some humans and do a thing, but that's, you know, I don't know. We have supplant form, which is just the best creature on the board. That's what it is. It's the best creature on the board, and you get a temporary reprieve from that creature. Of course, we have Puka's Mischief. There again, the same thing. Uh, swap something with someone so you can give them your cumulative upkeep cards if they get too out of control. And then Deflection. Now, I, I've i always loved Deflection. We got it in Ice Age. And four mana... Now, it was the first time we'd ever seen it, and we thought it was... I, I remember this card in Ice Age Standard. or oh, I'm sorry. Ice Age Type 2 Standard wasn't a thing. It was called Type 2 and Type 1. It was $15. Deflection was $15, man. Cards were... It, it took something for a card to get that big then, because everybody was... The very first thing was, man, we're going to deflect the fireball. Whatever. <laughs> I had a bunch of them. I played it in a lot of decks. I don't know that I ever deflected a fireball. <laughs> and our last card is good old-fashioned Energy Flux. Now, this is the revised version. It was in Antiquities first off, and then uh, they brought it over to the core sets for a couple of times. And then I think they brought it back in Urza Block, if I'm not mistaken. But... This is, I mean, it's pretty sharp now. If somebody's got the heavy artifact deck, that's rough. Two, two generic per. Now, yeah, there's the whole uh, evil thing that, you know, I would have done in other decks like, uh, you know, the Michaels of the Lattice. And, yeah, but anyway, that's it. What I've got for Chizai. We're just going to say that word and call it right, even though it's probably not. But it's deck number 392. I do appreciate y'all watching. Uh, I, I do appreciate uh, all the uh, the outreach. We've got a lot more patrons, and I feel horrible because I should be. Uh, I'll, I'll do the patron shout-outs at the beginning of the next deck. Uh, but I believe that's it right now. I appreciate everybody. For watching sharing liking you know smashing that like button the it does help the algorithm out for suggested videos and that gets more views and you know hence grows the channel so i appreciate everybody for watching liking sharing commenting donating thank y'all so much but i think right now i think we're gonna shuffle and cut